Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Etiquette Guy. I'm Mary Casement and my friend Mr. Etiquette is Jay Reamer. Welcome Jay. Thank you Mary, nice to be here. Yes, and we're going to do s not exactly question and answer format today, but um, it'll be focused on two main subjects and I've got 27 questions that uh, we'll just sort of fly by the seat of our pants. Why not? And you'll have, I'm sure you'll have lots of answers for us. This is uh, particularly a time of year when people have received a lot of gifts and presents and friends and all sorts of things. And it's time to say thank you. Mm -hmm. Please tell us more about thank yous because there's always great hoopla in any household when mom says you have to write a thank you note. And what are thank the rules you, there? Thank you notes are really important. Okay. And <clears throat> right off the bat, there is not a replacement for a handwritten thank you note, a suitable one. Okay. There, there, there obviously there are replacements. Um, you can send emails, you can send text messages, you can do all of these things. What you about can, a you phone can, call? You can phone. Yeah. That's still not, a, not the same as ma writing a thank you note. Now, I've made a bit of a study of thank you notes, <coughs> as I'm... <laughs> as an I, interesting you, as you subject. might imagine, <laughs> an interesting subject. I live a very exciting life. <laughs> And <clears throat> the thing about thank you notes is, is that people don't realize how little time it takes actually to write one. Yes, especially when you buy those pre-printed mm. ones that say thank you. No! I mean, your introduction <laughs> is already there. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> back to square one. Uh, you can... I can't just buy that and sign my name. You can do anything you want. Um, but I prefer using a card that doesn't say thank you on it already. Okay. And and it gives you a ch you only have to write two or three lines. I think getting, because if you receive a thank you note in the mail and it says thank you on it already versus one that doesn't, mm -hmm. it's, it's different. It is, is actually different. And I think, I think at this point in, in time though, if we can get people to use anything, we're, we're moving in the right direction. Okay. But I do think a handwritten note is important. And I think one of the reasons that people balk at it is they think it takes too too long. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take too long. It takes two minutes to write a thank you note and about 30 seconds to write um, an envelope. Okay. And so that's two and a half minutes and if you can't be grateful enough for something that somebody's given you to spend two and a half minutes thanking them then you're not grateful, period. And you shouldn't get another gift. <laughs> well I don't know about that because there are all kinds of there are all kinds of things going on but I but I I think it's a fast track to not getting another gift. Okay. And, it's, and, and I know that there are families. I mean, I've talked to people on the phone who've said, well, you know, Jay, I stopped giving my grandson uh, Christmas presents when he turned 16 because he stopped writing me thank you notes. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, there you go. And, you know, if the kid doesn't learn, uh, then they, they aren't going to teach either. You're not, they're That's not right. going to teach. Not and it's not, it, on. it isn't about writing thank you notes. It's about being grateful. grateful. That's the issue. And I think that <clears throat> writing a thank you note is symbolic and it is actually, it's a physical demonstration of being grateful. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important. And it's part of the problem that we have in this fast paced world. Now, I think that um, if, you, if you don't, know the person particularly well, or if it's in a business situation, you know, there are times perhaps when an email thank you would be suitable. For instance, if you're taken out for lunch, or if you're taken out uh, um, even to uh, a ball game or okay. something like that. I think that you could, you could um, get away with perfectly well an email. Text messages are, I think, at the bottom of the, of the heap as far as effective communication. I mean, I think even, well, I, I think some of the social networks would, would stack in there at that level also. Excuse me. Um, but I think, um, I think that it, it, it just is, it takes a little bit of an effort. But you know the thing that I've discovered is that people don't know how to write. I mean, forget about mm -hmm. thinking of what the words should be. They literally, physically, don't have penmanship, penmanship skills. No. And I think that that is or a travesty. Or spelling skills. Spelling, yes, and don't think that spell check is going to help you because it's not your mm -hmm. friend. 
um, I mean, if you knew the things that people oh. got from me, and they would, they would write and they'd say, what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> and I'd say, what on earth are you talking about? I have no idea. What do you mean? So, and these words can be quite far apart from actually what your thought is. Anyway, I think it's important for, for you to practice writing. Yes, okay. It doesn't take very much practice to, to learn how to form the letter A or the letter L. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't, it just doesn't, it's not hard. Millions and millions of people do it every day. And, and it was, and, and if you look back at the old penmanship books, or <laughs> if you look back on your educational days when we all took penmanship in school, you know, if you did one little thing wrong, it was, you know, you got a, a red mark. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have to write that perfectly, but I think, in fact, I don't, I think people's penmanship has, is deplorable today. However, it's still legible. And I think it's, it shows that you've made an effort. And I think it's really important. Now, one of the things that I learned, actually, I, it was pointed out to me this year, which I never knew, was envelopes that are used for social um, communication yes. tend to have triangular, um, the the flaps, flaps yes. and business tends to be straight, straight across. So if you're searching for appropriate note paper for things, I think that um, keep that in mind. I mean, it's just it's just an interesting little thing. So, um, but I think that <clears throat> getting the, the 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 note written is important. Okay. And it should be written within 48 hours. I was going to say, when is a good time? And what, what if you, you've, something's come up or you've just been a slacker? Is there a too late to, to say thank you period? I don't think it's really ever too late. I think it can be, it, there can be a bit of groveling involved in the note <laughs> <laughs> after a certain amount of time. I would say that, you know, here we are uh, after Christmas, and I think that if you have your notes in the mail, within, well, a week is ideal, within two weeks is acceptable. Beyond that, then you have to start saying, I'm so sorry I haven't written you sooner, but I've been in the hospital with a broken leg, or whatever excuse you might use. Don't use that you've been to the Caribbean sunning. That's okay. not a good excuse. Just think of the amount of time you spend on the airplane. You could be writing thank you notes. Mm -hmm. And I think that the written word is, it's different when it comes out of the end of your hand in a in a pen or a pencil than typing. Yes. We 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 our th our brains think differently with a pen than they do with a typewriter or a keyboard, I guess they call it these days. So I think that it is um uh, so a couple of, after a couple of weeks, then you have to start apologizing for not having written it. But it's never too late to write one. When I was a kid, uh, and, I, and I could actually write, um, which we didn't learn to write until the first grade when I was growing up. And you didn't learn the connecting cursive, the cursive yeah. until the second grade. Yeah. So, but first grade... You should have gone to a convent. Th what a clever idea. Why didn't somebody think of that? <laughs> um, I, uh, so after, uh, so starting when I was six years old in first grade, <coughs> thank you notes were done after Christmas. Now, of course, the trick is when you're six is you're so excited to get a Christmas present that y the note that goes, al or the tag that goes along with mm -hmm. the Christmas present is oftentimes lost. Well, it's certainly separated. Okay. You, 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 it, it, you don't throw it out, I mean, under penalty of death, but <clears throat> you, you can get it confused. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, you've got four uh, aunts and uncles that have given you um, presents and you know when you're six years old everybody and their brother gives you a present. Um, it's really important to keep the tag and the gift together and you that's something that okay. one learns. Okay, because you can't just say thanks very much for the gift? No, you can't say thanks very much. I mean you, 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 you have to identify the gift. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is how you write a thank you note. You, you say thank you Aunt Ethel for my beautiful, you know, book on airplanes. I am going to read it, uh, you know, while, you know, I'm on vacation and it's such a keen interest of mine, blah, 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 blah. you know, love, Jay. Okay. Now, when you're six years old, you don't think in those terms. So your sentences are going to be simpler and they're going to be, uh, you know, 
it's going to be a short note, and that's yeah. what you should expect. But the fact that that somebody that a six year old kid has taken the the time to write a thank you note that has a lot of impact on the person that receives that note, and you can be guaranteed you're going to get a present the next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a little little guarantee. But um, I d I don't think that um, saying thank you for my nice gift, I like it so much. Um, I hope to see you soon. Jay, that, okay. it's, it's, it's just, it. there's no thought put into it. I mean, that, that is not actual gratitude. And I think that the problem is, is that if the parents don't teach their children what gratitude looks like, they're not going to learn. I mean, there's no, I haven't found at the pharmacy uh, a pill bottle labeled gratitude. Mm -hmm. So you have to be taught this. And, and I think it's really important for parents to take the time to actually show the kids how to do it by demonstrating. Like I'm writing my aunt a letter, a, a thank you note, because you know she gave me whatever she gave me. And this is, you're gonna do the same and we're gonna sit down and it can actually be a family affair. Activity, yeah. I mean, that's what I did when I was a kid. My sister and I sat down at the table and my mother uh, and, and we wrote thank you notes. That's just mm -hmm. what we did. And, um, and I think it's really, it's, it's something that when, when you instill something like that in, in, a, in a child at an early age, it's something that sticks with them. It's mm -hmm. a bit like riding a bike, and they won't feel awkward. If, if, if you are all of a sudden 16 years old and you've never written a thank you note in your life, writing a thank you note, you're going to feel strange. It's, it's going to be challenge. like, this is weird. Yeah. And, it, and it, it's a challenge to think of what to say, but it's a challenge to even show gratitude mm -hmm. if you're not used to it doing it in that way and then that's a bad bad thing so I think that I think that it's so I think we've got that right thank you notes write them within 48 hours if possible a week two weeks after that it's, it's you're getting late but even if it's six months later and you suddenly discover oh my god I forgot to thank so-and-so for that lovely thing they gave me write them a note they're they're you know you're not going to they're not going to hate you for it. Mm -hmm. It's better than, than not doing anything at all. Yeah. Any of these, what I call substandard forms of communication for writing thank you notes, um, is better than not doing anything at all. Okay. So even, but now it will also identify your personality. You know, if, if, you, send, yeah. if you send a text message, if I res well, I wouldn't know what to do with a text message because I, I don't, no, I'm not I, technically savvy that right. way. So. So all of you out there who sent me presents um, that are sending or that I've sent presents to that are expecting me to respond to your text <laughs> message, it isn't going to happen. So I think that um, I think emails would be second best. Some people are so accustomed to communicating with email today that some people may actually even think that they are more comfortable receiving it that way. That is true in a lot of business communication, but it's not true in thank you notes. Okay. And if you don't have the address where to send it, find it. Okay, that's easy enough it's to do. It's very easy to do. Um, is it ever appropriate, if you've given someone a gift and you didn't get a thank you note ever, or even a call or an email or any form, is it appropriate to contact the person and say, did you actually receive the gift? I think it is because if you don't, I mean, if you if you dropped the gift off at their house, mm -hmm. you know they received yeah. it. No, I'm thinking of a situation <clears throat> if, that I if, was in. If where you sent it, yes. for instance, or if you ordered it online. That's what I'm thinking yeah. of. I uh, it was a wedding gift, and arranged. It was wasn't in stock at the time, but they were getting it in, and the person was supposed to pick it up. But I have no idea if they've ever received it. A lot of these places, like I buy stuff on Amazon or eBay or whatever, and you send these things along. Um, oftentimes, they're, they're so organized today that you, they, they have tracking mm -hmm. abilities, some of them. So you know if the, if oh, the gift okay. has arrived. However, you can always use this as an excuse saying, I, I know, it, according, to, according to the Canada Post, mm -hmm. um, you know, your gift arrived on such, such a date, but I don't always trust Canada Post. Um, did you actually receive it? You know, because sometimes things can be confused, yeah. and and that and that's true. I mean, no matter what the system, they all have glitches. 
And well, so you can always check and see. Because yeah. especially when it's an expensive gift that you've sent. Right. Um, I've always wondered whether it was appropriate or not. So. I think that it's absolutely appropriate because, because you want to make sure the person got it. Yes. Whether the person wrote you a thank you note or not, Isn't you still issue. want to no. make sure they got yeah. it. Now, of course, this, the, the sub, the sub issue is, and why the hell didn't you write me a thank you note? Mm -hmm. But that's not something that you, that's not something that you bring up with the person. All right. In a business situation, if you're a secretary, administrative assistant, whatever, for someone, is it your role to write thank you notes for your boss, for no. your manager? If it was a gift to the to the company, if you received, uh, you know, food or fruit baskets, bottles of wine, that type of thing. I think that it would be all right if it was, if it, in other words, if one office sent another office. Like, let's just suppose Mr. Smith sent Mr. Jones's office a Christmas package. Mm -hmm. That happens. It would be fine depending on who the package was sent to, um, for the secretary to, to write back. But it really ought to be, I mean, she, he, whoever the personal assistant is, can compose the note and even type it up. But it should be signed by okay. the president, yeah. unless they're out of the country. And, uh, you know, so Mary Casement for Mr. Smith, okay. something like that. And then at least the, it, it's, a, it's an acknowledgment. Um, handwritten thank you notes in business would be unusual um, because gifts um, in the business arena can sometimes appear inappropriate. Okay. You know, you don't, you don't give big gifts in business um, because it can be perceived as bribery or mm -hmm. sort of setting up um, something that's untoward. So <clears throat> I think, but I think as far as, like if I was the boss and I said, Mary, send, send uh, Mr. Brown a, a thank you note, mm -hmm. I think that, I think it's, you're, you're pushing the responsibility on okay. to somebody else. And I think that, that that happens enough in the business world that's not right. In other words, bosses will oftentimes slough off jobs that are their responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the things, you know, that's a, that'd be a great topic one day to discuss is the whole concept of responsibility. Because oftentimes I've noticed, I don't know whether you've ever noticed this, but I've noticed people take on responsibility that isn't theirs. Yes. And they, and they don't take on responsibility that, that is theirs. Yeah. And so it's, it, this isn't a pick and choose universe, you know, this isn't like the, the, the smorgasbord at the Chinese lunch counter. I mean, you, you, you have certain responsibilities that you have to, and you know the thing about it is, people notice that kind of thing, and they, but they don't say anything about it. True. So we call that in the biz, we call that the silent killer. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that it's, it, you're never gonna want, you're never gonna know that you annoyed someone, or that you, that you, uh, made it so that that deal wouldn't close because they're not going to tell you. Okay. So I think it's really important to mind your P's and Q's if you want to get ahead in the business world. Now, if you don't care, then mm -hmm. you need to do whatever you want. But for, I think for people who want to feel satisfied and feel that they've actually made a connection, uh, a good one, then you have to do certain things. And writing a thank you note or um, picking up the phone is, is a wonderful thing also. Some people are great and love to communicate on the phone. Some people don't like it. Okay. You know, I mean, I have friends who will spend more time on the telephone than they'll spend on the computer and the other way around. So I think, you know, whatever works for you is fine, but there's no substitute for the handwritten note. And then beyond that, the phone call would be second, then the email, and then I suppose the text, um, you know, on, Facebook and on Twitter, uh, and even on LinkedIn, which are three social networks that I use a lot, they all have the ability to send a private message. Okay. So I could send you a private message if you were <clears throat> involved, if you were signed up for one of those services that nobody else would ever see. 
So this business of staying away from these sites because the world is going to know everything about you is rubbish. Uh, they're only going to know what what is put out there about you. Now, uh, 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 mind you, other people can put stuff out, but if I wanted to send you a personal note, mm -hmm. it would be totally private. Okay. So, but again, it doesn't replace the private the the handwritten. handwritten. I yeah. love getting handwritten notes. I don't know anybody who doesn't. I mean, the stuff that comes in the mail today. I mean, and I even you can even s set a camera on me sorting mail in the post <laughs> office. The the bills go in one area. The the yeah. circulars go right in the recycle bin. I don't even look at them. Some people read them, um, but the the handwritten notes they're mm -hmm. right in the front. They're mm -hmm. the first ones that get opened, sure. and it gives me a warm fuzzy feeling when somebody sends me a note. I I love it. I mean, it's just kind of like receiving a Christmas card when you see your name written out mm -hmm. in in uh, in ink. You know, it's cool. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And it, it, and people appreciate it. Yeah, the indicator is someone's actually thought about me. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, what about traveling nowadays? We were talking about this a little bit earlier. And it's, a, again, winter season. A lot of people are going south, uh, going to visit family and so on. Is there, I'm sure there is, could you tell us more about the appropriate etiquette in airport and traveling situations? Well, I think um, one of the things about traveling today is, is that you need to plan things out much more carefully than you ever did before. Um, airlines are stricter. Oh, so many um, restrictions. Um, yes. Oh, yeah, it goes on and on. Mm -hmm. um, all, all of the industries within the hospitality industry, whether it be the, the travel people or the hotel people or the restaurant people or who, whoever yes. it might be, they all <coughs> need, they, they have stricter and stricter policies because people have abused the old systems. Yes. And, and, the, and, 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 and it's not, the flexibility has been taken out because we don't have, we don't have as much leeway anymore for, for people canceling. And, and I mean, we, 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 we just, we, you know, because if somebody cancels, then you've got to fill the room. And if the room can't get filled in, then you're out of pocket. And it's not out of pocket. 15 bucks like it was when we were kids. Mm -hmm. It's out a couple hundred or a couple thousand bucks and it makes a difference. So I think planning is, that's the first thing, that is the first thing that is going to make your life easier if you're going on a trip. Plan everything. The next thing I think is to allow a lot more time than you think you need. Okay. Now at the airport they say if you're flying domestically you need to be there two hours ahead of time. Very few airline, airports I've found that that's really important, but I'm always there. There's stuff to do in airports. If you're late, though, don't panic because you can always, you do actually have a little bit of extra time and <clears throat> you can get on the plane. There are ways. But I think that if you, um, if you allow for extra time, because going through security is a big deal. And I, yes. I know for me, uh, going through security is a real it's always a problem because um, I've either got a, 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 you know, a, a bracelet on that, that won't come off easily and it sets all the bells off, or, you know, and some and airports differ. You know, one airport mm. I'll breeze through and the next one it'll be, you know, like... Well, well different airports have different uh, levels of uh, levels. security now, like these body mm. scanners are mm -hmm. probably quite intimidating for some people. I had to go through one the other day. I was, um, I was, actually I thought it was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Only you would. <laughs> I thought, wow. <laughs> you know what? Didn't know my liver looked like <clears throat> that. They don't tell you what they see, thankfully. But it is, uh, it, it's, it's interesting if you are nice to the people that are checking out your baggage and look, asking you all the questions and all that kind of stuff, it actually brightens their day because not everybody is. I mean, there are a lot of people who really are so rude and so self-absorbed, and they treat these people like um, Slaves. inferiors. Yes. You yeah. know, I mean, it, it's just, it's a really, it's very unfriendly, and it, it's though they're not even human. And it's not right. I mean, they're, and all they have to do is turn the, turn the, turn the board on you, and you realize quickly that it would have been a whole lot easier to be nice to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I think 
familiarizing yourself with what exactly the regulations are. Okay. Like you have to take the little toothpaste, or if you're going to take the big toothpaste, make sure that it's in your suitcase. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you know what the weight limitations are so that you're not caught off guard at the ticket counter yes. having to pull a pair of shoes out of your suitcase because your luggage is over. I mean, I've had to do this. It's not the ticket counter attendance problem. I mean, it isn't, it, they didn't make up these rules. So getting annoyed with them isn't going to get you anywhere. They're just following policy. So I think being familiar with all of these kinds of regulations and things, it, it's, it's very important and it makes your life much easier. Mm -hmm. Now there are uh, tips uh, to traveling uh, and they're constantly changing. So for instance, if you, you know, uh, <clears throat> if you fly someplace, they now have seats in the economy section of the plane that you can pay extra money for. They're they, what they call preferred seats. Now I haven't yet to figure out what's so preferred about them because I've tried this a couple of times and sometimes they're preferred and sometimes they're really not a whole lot different. But uh, if you can do that, I, I recommend doing, uh, if you want to sit in the front row, if you yes. want to sit in the exit row, yeah. if you want to sit on an aisle seat, right. you can do this ahead and you pay 25 bucks or something and okay. on a long haul flight it's well worth it. Mm -hmm. Now the other thing that I found out is, is that um, instead of paying thousands and thousands of extra dollars for a business class seat, you buy um, an, an economy class seat and you go and instead of having to shell out 30,000 air miles, which not everybody has in their back pocket, you can pay money to upgrade. Oh, okay. And it's a fraction of what the cost of the ticket would be. Now, of course, there's no guarantee that the upgrade is going to be available. If the plane's full, the plane's full. I have not gotten on a plane that is full in a long time. Maybe that's just because I don't like traveling during busy times. <laughs> anyway, there are a lot of these kinds of things, but I think the main thing is to plan ahead, okay. to be polite to the people that you interact with, yes. and to give yourself plenty of time. Okay. And I think those, those, if you do those three things, your, your trip is going to be much, much easier than if you don't. What you're really saying is be responsible for your own behavior. Yes, be responsible and be respectful of other people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you are interacting with other people and you, it's, it's really, it pays dividends. <laughs> okay. Well, we hope you will reap some of the uh, benefits and dividends of this discussion today, folks. And thank you so much, Jay, for taking time out again. And please stay tuned. We're going to have more great shows coming up on your community channel, CHCP-TV 26.